shoot and it, it you know where to go if, if you have any any trouble with the hardware um we we are pretty much a dell shop uh, all our hardware that we deploy in the in the field unless it's for a specific purpose you know we fujitsu tablets or um other industry specific kind of tablets um we we try and utilize dell equipment as much as possible uh for networking it's it's pretty much cisco unless in it, it, maybe the client has a t1 or a bonded t1 that uh they're using an ad train unit and uh then we can we can throw some other hardware behind that or uh usually usually the the service provider doesn't really grant you access to those devices uh for obvious reasons but um then we can you know we can throw some cisco hardware behind there and secure the, the network and and uh help us remotely manage things more more easily so when you're uh, when you're doing your remote and in and, and your managed services, do you have a certain um, like desktop or um, like control panel that you use to, to to take care of all that for your customers on your end? Uh, can you clar- clarify a little bit? Like, like a soft like is there a certain kind of software that you guys use um, to to do all all of your managed services for your different customers? I uh, it really depends on the uh the um really the situation uh we we manage our our client uh, documentation in uh, a crm system and uh we use utilize it 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 basically works for crm purposes and and help desk ticketing um our remote support we we have a an appliance actually at our at our data center that serves the software that we use um called turbo meeting actually by uh, a company called our hub and um it has uh chat features um you can you can type back and forth to the to the remote client um you can organize uh, uh well you can organize meetings uh, so that you can share desktops um you can organize phone conferences and whatnot it's it's pretty slick, but um, you know, everybody like like anything else. Everybody has their their own tastes, and and um, a lot, I know a lot of people use it. Uh, Mikogo uh, mm-hmm. has been a, a big recent one. Um, Log me in rescue is a is a really big one. Actually, the Geek Squad uses that. Uh, you know, there's Join Dot Me, uh, Team Viewer. Um, yeah. it, it's really, it really just comes down to what, what works best for you. Yeah. I'm kind of glad I'm talking to you today. I actually, I just accepted an invitation to a CRM meeting they're having in Chicago and there's okay. supposed to be a bunch of different vendors and stuff there, um, hmm. for managed services. And I, I, you know, I, I'm just going to go and see if I can learn some stuff more about remote, you know, remote help and, and things like that. Hmm. Did, um, uh, I was gonna say when you when you are uh, when you're setting up different new businesses and stuff, um, so you kind of have like a cookie cutter approach with using all Dell and then kind of just add on to what they, they specifically want to get done in their offices and things. It's kind of that, that. I mean, I wish all my customers had the same computers and the same hardware. That would make everything so much easier. But you guys kind of take that approach. That that seems to work out pretty good for you. Yeah, it does actually. Uh, we we since since uh, we standardize a lot. Um, the, I mean, the Dell hardware uh, you you always for support. Uh, they're they're usually pretty good if you have any hardware failures. Um, you know, we try and keep up to date with BIOS updates. Uh, if it, depending on the issue, you might you might need to keep up to date with the drivers. But uh, you know, their their website for for drivers is is. I mean, it's about as good as it can be uh, for free site, you know, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as standardizing the networking equipment, uh, it, it, it makes it very easy to deploy hardware that has, you know, identical software versions, firmware versions. Um, you know, you're familiar with the product. It's it's much easier to, to manage because, uh, you know, since we use mainly cisco hardware we have a lot of uh, cisco pix firewalls in the field cisco asa firewalls in the field and it, since the the command structure is is 
so similar between the different versions, you know, it, it's very easy to troubleshoot or, or upgrade or make changes to add VPNs to. And, um, you know, once, once you, you know what you're doing pretty much, it's, it's, it's easy to, to be pretty versatile. Do you guys do like a, like, like six month checkups and things like that, or you have certain schedules that you go by for each customer, um, as far as maintenance goes on, on their computers? Well, we Whether do remote we, or physical. We do um, mainly remote, uh, but we do have clients where we have actually staff on site. Um, but uh, we we actually manage actively on a, on a daily to weekly basis, and uh, we you know we have weekly reboot schedules. We we manage updates prior to the reboots. Um, and that's, that's not just server on the, on the server, that's network wide. So we have, uh, clients that might have, you know, 10 or 15 computers. We have clients that have, you know, 30 to 40 computers and, and we manage updates for all of those. Um, it's, it's actually, uh, I talked a little bit about it on the last, uh, episode that I was on and that was, um, using WSUS. It's the, uh, windows server update services. And, um, you know, it's, it's a little daunting to, to manage, but, you know, if, if you keep up on it, then it, it kind of helps main, maintain fewer virus <laughs> infections. I I've found anyways, um, because I was actually just reading a, an article about that on, uh, Sophos, uh, securities, uh, Twitter, and they had an article, uh, that was talking about how, uh, these malware, uh, these malware writers are actually attacking the same vulnerabilities that have been around for, you know, 12 to 18 months. And, uh, you know, their security loopholes in, in the Windows operating system. And it's just because they haven't been patched. Even though a patch has been out for, you know, 12 to 15 months, you know, nobody does their updates. I mean, right. how, many, how many houses have you gone into and where you've seen that, you know, they have 100 updates pending and, and they still haven't done service pack three, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and some techs out there turn, turn automatic updating off. I, I've noticed, you know, people that I follow behind, you know, maybe that's why I'm getting the call, but they, yeah, a lot of people, I, I mean, I have that. I always put my customers, you know, I, I don't, I put them on automatic updates just for, you know, I've never really had a problem where I've had to go back and fix something that an update broke. I mean, I suppose it happens sometimes, but, so, so what's like a typical patch Tuesday look like for your, for you guys? Are you, is it just a lot, uh, a lot of work then on, on patch Tuesdays? There's, yeah, there's generally a lot of work. Um, one of the guys in our, in our office handles a majority of it. And, um, it, it's, it, as long as the, the day isn't too busy, it's, it's not too bad, but, um, usually we, we get a lot of calls in. Uh, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and then it, things kind of die down a little bit Wednesday, Thursday, and then, um, you know, Friday's kind of hit or miss. <laughs> so, so the, the W sauce, you use that only for when you first start setting it up after that, you, do you still use that, um, afterwards once you're, once the computer's up and going? That actually, um, well, it runs on the server and, and we, it allows us to push out updates to all the, all the workstations on the network. But, uh, once we have that, once we have the server in, that's one of the services that, that, you know, we install and, uh, we, we manage that weekly. So it's, it's something that we, we actively maintain. Other than up, up updates, um, for things like that, what, what are the kind of things do you do, you do behind the scenes that a lot of us might not think about? Uh, really, right. there's a there's a lot of monitoring that, that goes on as far as the server performance, uh, server services, exchange services, uh, the networking equipment goes, um, things that the client wouldn't necessarily think would be important, but they definitely are because it helps us be more proactive. Uh, UPS monitoring, uh, we we actively monitor UPSs uh, on the servers, so we know anytime. Uh, the power goes out or they have a brownout or uh, a server goes down, you know, we're, we're usually on top of that. And uh, we, you know, if, if we don't call them first, uh, they're, they're pretty quick. Uh, we might get a call as we're picking them up, picking up the phone to call them. Um, 
just to check on things and make sure that everything's running okay. We have we have some clients though that have uh, kind of flaky power, and it, it's really a good thing that, that we have the the UPSs in place because of that. So, so you have it set up where you're going to receive automatic alerts when certain things happen at your at your clients' uh, businesses and and servers and and and, yes. and networks. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, we, other, uh, th other than UPS, what other kind of alerts um, are you receiving? You know. Um, well, we actually we get daily daily um, performance alerts. Uh, if if any of the services go go down on the servers. Uh, we know about that if uh, if the server's been off for for too long, uh, we know about that as well. Um, if the server is is really getting hit, then then we know about that as well. Uh, anytime there's a there's a disk space warning, um, we're always on top of that. Um, you know, it, there's there's certain thresholds that we maintain so so that they have enough disk space for you know Exchange, SQL, and whatnot. Uh, if the memory usage is too high, we're always on top of that as well. Um, we really try and try and make sure that the server is performing as it should without bogging down the rest of the network. Do you do you have alerts if um, you have certain uh, people who are like trying to install programs on their on their uh, computers on on the network? Anything Not so like much. that? No, um, you, the the. The computers are, are generally uh, fairly um, restricted uh, where they need to be, and uh, we don't really have very many issues with that. Do you manage that that kind of um, like net nanny kind of babysitting of of some of your clients' computers too for them uh, to see not, if their employees not are... as much, not as much. Uh, there, our our clients are, are rather trusting, but they do block certain websites. I mean, we, we do web filtering and whatnot. Um, you, can, kind of a you can actually, forget. yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, you can do that through, uh, the Cisco products actually. Uh, you can, you can block websites and, and domains and whatnot. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of doing if, if you're not really familiar with it, but, uh, there's, there's other things that, that you can utilize. You can use the open DNS or dying DNS, uh, for some of your clients, if if that's something that you wanted to to manage, uh, it's actually fairly fairly easy. Uh, they have well, Dyn DNS actually uses Bar Barracuda networks and their spam filtering, and um, mm. it's it's actually very good. I use it at, at home here, and uh, it blocks out advertisements. You can have it block spam. Uh, there's there's all sorts of categories that you can block, uh, and then you know you just. Generally, when you set up a server, you set four orders for your server, and then every every request goes from the, the workstations on site to the server, and then the server relays it to the DNS server. Well, if you're using Dyn DNS and you have uh, an internet guide, it's their their product that they use is Internet Guide, and you can actually get a free account for that. But uh, there are limitations to that. Um, but with the Internet Guide, you can set up your, your filter, your web filter. You can block out specific domains. You can block out categories. And then you just set your forwarders on your, forwarders on your server to the Dyn DNS servers. And then since it recognizes your IP is associated with your account, it then filters according to your account's specifications. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 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 What, yeah and then once you set that up, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. There's other are, there's other things that you can do with your your some of your clients if they're looking for web filters or or VPN uh, connectivity. Um, one of the products that you can get for free and you can add on paid modules to is Untangle. I don't I don't know if I've ever heard. I, well, I, I'm I'm sure I've heard somebody talk about that before on the show once or twice at least. Uh, Untangle is is basically an operating system in and of itself that uh, looks like a virtual server rack. And it lets you load modules into it. You have uh, a, a router, I believe. Uh, they have VPN uh, using OpenVPN. You can do a web filter. You can do a spam filter, antivirus, uh, anti-spyware. And then there's paid modules for each of those. And um, you, you just take a workstation that has a couple uh, NICs on it. Uh, you install this, this operating system. And it's a Linux-based operating system. Uh, then you get it up on your network, and you can you can either use it like uh, 
like you might use a server, you can you can throw it behind your switch or you can put it in front of your network. So you can there's there's a firewall app on there as well. 